Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to Journey to VR. So this week is part two of my demo showing how to use the Motion Graphics Toolkit to do this logo animation. And if you remember last week, we started off doing the background element getting what written on. So that kind of cage, that white wireframe cage getting written on. This week, what I'm gonna show you guys is how to do that front urban logo getting dropped in. So the sort of those faces that are kind of cascading down and dropping in and building up that front urban tag. So how do you do that? You do it with the Motion Graphics Toolkit and it's super, super fun. So here we are inside of Maya and the first thing that we need to do is um, take this piece of geometry that was originally generated using the SVG importer and get just the front faces for it. So I'll hit Control-1 to isolate my view of that piece of geometry and I'll just grab all these back faces and delete them. So now that we've done that, the next thing that I wanna do is get some better tessellation on this piece of geometry. Right now, it doesn't really have any faces in there and there's lots of different ways of tessellating inside of Maya. You could use triangulate, add divisions. There's several ways of doing it. What I'm gonna be doing today is using poly remesh. If you remember last week, we briefly talked about poly remesh when we were talking about the SVG node. Poly Remesh is the tessellator that's on the text tool as well as the SVG node, and it's a really great tessellator. And you can use it or hijack it to retessellate any piece of geometry inside of Maya. It's super, super cool. So all you have to do is select the piece of geometry, go over to the mail command, and type Poly Remesh with a capital R, M E S H. And as soon as you do that, you can see that it goes through and it just triangulates that guy. And what we're gonna do is we're going to jump into the options for this and start to modify that. And the thing that this does that's so nice is it does a beautiful job of evenly distributing the polygons. It gives you the ability to refine it and get those guys looking exactly the way you want. And you can also use a poly reduction after that refinement's happened. Now for this example, I'm gonna drop that poly reduce down because I wanna preserve those outside edges. But what it does is it does a great job of giving you really nice even distribution. So you don't have really long skinny triangles when you use the poly remesh node, which is exactly what we want for this example. It's also great for something like cloth simulations where you wanna have kind of evenly distributed and evenly sized triangles. The poly remesh node does an awesome job of doing that guy. And we'll just kind of smooth those out a little bit. So with that done, the next thing that we wanna do is get some UVs on this piece of geometry because a lot of that detail comes from a texture map. Now, unfortunately, this piece of geometry, if you look here, has been positioned and rotated into my world. So I can't just project my UVs down an X axis or a Z axis because it's already kind of positioned in world space. So to get around that, I'm gonna project UVs from the point of view of a camera. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new camera to begin working with. So we'll just say edit uh, or create camera. Now with that camera highlighted, I'm gonna to add to my selection by holding down the control key, the urban logo that's got those transforms that I wanna match. And we'll just use the modify match transforms to align that camera to that piece of geometry. This was new in 2017. So now that we've done that, we can simply drag and drop that camera into our viewport to begin looking through it. And you'll notice that the object is now, or the camera is now completely aligned with that urban logo, but it still has perspective in there. So if we projected the UVs onto this piece of geometry now, that perspective would get baked into those UVs, which would not be cool. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to go to the camera shape node, and on that camera shape node, if you scroll down here and go to orthographic views and toggle that on, you can get rid of the perspective. So obviously if I go into a wireframe mode here, you can see that there's no longer any perspective in that camera. So this is perfect for me to project UVs onto that urban logo now. So we'll just go up to the modeling menu underneath modeling, go to UVs and base that off of our camera. So our selected object with our current camera that's in our view here, we'll create those UVs. And if we jump over to our window, general editors, I'm sorry, modeling editors, UV editor, and bring up the UV editor here, you can see that those UVs look really cool. You'll also notice that the UV editor looks different. I'm working in update three of Maya 2017. This came out about a week ago and the UV editor and the UV workflow has been completely overhauled for update three. It's super, super cool. Make sure you go check out the what's new in 2017 update three to get all the uh, details on this. I'm not gonna demo it today because um, we don't have time, but it's super cool, trust me. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and just jump back over to this piece of geometry and get that texture map assigned to it. So we'll bring up our hypershade window and we'll jump over to textures and we'll just drag and drop that urban logo on that guy and I'll mouse button on top of that to bring this back up here. And I just need to tweak these guys a little bit to get them to uh, line up with that texture map. So we'll just select our UVs and I'm gonna kind of fast forward here and just sort of get these guys 
dialed in to where they look they look kind of aligned with what that original texture map was doing. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's just go ahead and jump back to this guy. And the first thing you want to do is when you're playing around with the motion graphics networks inside of Maya, a lot of times you'll get weird offsets and things if you don't have your transforms zeroed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a freeze all on this guy. And then I'm just going to do an edit delete by type history to blow away all that UV placement and remeshing information that we've done. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to start moving these faces around using the motion graphics network. So this is pretty straightforward to do. I'm actually going to make a duplicate version of this piece of geometry because one of them we're going to use to assist us in placing some nodes in the motion graphics network and the second one we're going to use as the mesh that actually gets to form. So we'll just relabel this urban to urban P and we can kind of hide that guy. We don't need to see that one. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a polygon object. And with that polygon object made, I'm going to go ahead and create a new motion graphics network from that. So this uses the standard distribution of 10 down the x axis, pretty straightforward. Obviously, that's not what we want to do. We want to have each one of these cubes get aligned to the faces of our urban logo. So how do we do that? Well, it's really pretty straightforward. If you bring up the editor, the mash editor, and grab that distribution node for that object, we're going to go ahead and jump over here and switch it from being a linear input of uh, distribution to be a mesh distribution. And we're going to use that in mesh from that hidden object that we just made, Urban P. So as soon as we do that, you can see that randomly scattered across this guy are these polygon cubes. Pretty straightforward. Now we're going to switch it from being just a random scattering to be the face centers. And we're going to tell it to flood the mesh. So now, Basically, every triangle in that piece of geometry has a cube associated with it. We're going to use that cube now to basically pull along for the ride an exploded version of this exact same mesh. So all you have to do is go back to the waiter node and add on to it a utility called explode. This is expecting a mesh input that's going to get exploded. So very straightforward. We'll drag and drop in the mesh that we're currently seeing to that guy. So with that done, now if we go back to our waiter node and we add on a procedural animation node, something like signal, you can see that as I start to scrub through my time slider, those cubes move and ultimately those cubes are influencing the position of those sphere of, of the polygons of the urban logo. Essentially the explosion gets driven by the position of each cube that we put on the face center. So very, very straightforward. And this is really cool. Now I've got a preset already dialed in here that kind of moves these guys around a little bit more extreme. So the effect was this object sort of getting built up. So how do you do that? Well, any of these nodes inside of the motion graphics network can be animated on and off. The strength of it can be adjusted. So you can use the strength slider, or you could use the random strength slider to, to sort of you know, turn the effect on and off, or you can use objects, fall off objects, which basically give us three dimensional manipulators that allow us to trigger those effects. So if we go ahead and we create a fall off for this guy, it's just made it right here in our scene. And if we do a show all, and I'll just kind of snap it here. So you can see now as I start to scale this effect up as that fall off object, and I'll just clean this up a little bit here. We'll hide that one and we'll, we'll hide this one. So we only see, uh, we only see one fall off object in our scene now. So as I start to move this fall off object around, obviously if it's inside of it, it, it turns the effect on right now. I want the inverse of this. So we're just going to invert the fall off. So as my object sort of comes across here, it starts to wipe on or build up the effect of the urban logo assembling itself. Pretty straightforward. Now, the final thing that I did for this um, effect was I added onto it another node, an offset node, and I used that offset node to do a couple things. With the offset node added, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to offset it up in Y a little bit because it kind of dropped down, and I'll sort of push it out a little bit and kind of push it this way a little bit. And the other thing that I did with this is I scaled these guys down to, um, to zero. So currently they're at a value of one. So if I want to get it to zero, all I have to do is offset that all by a range of minus one. So now if I drop the strength down here, you'll see that that logo is going to drop and start to, um, start to position itself appropriately. And what we want to do is use that same fall off object that we have in our scene as the effect that's driving this. So we'll just go down to the fall off section for the offset and literally just drag and drop this from the outliner into it. And now you can see that basically as I start to scale this up, I can wipe this across and it starts to build up that logo. So the final thing that I did for my piece was I added onto this a little bit of depth. So I just grabbed this guy, 
right mouse clicked and said extrude. With that extrusion done, I just gave it a little bit of Z depth inside of that guy. And now if we kind of back out here and grab that fall off object one last time, we'll kind of scale this guy down. You can see as I start to you know, animate through this just with that simple scale happening, those objects come down with that little bit of depth and they just kind of click in there and then they basically just build that urban logo. And that is essentially the end effect. So let's go ahead and watch the video one more time with the final effect. So here we are, you can see that it's basically got the wireframe buildup happening. Then I'm doing a very similar thing with the black that we just did for the front urban face here. It's using the same kind of explode workflow and then obviously the urban logo got dropped on there at the end. And that is basically how you can use the Motion Graphics Toolkit to do a really cool logo reveal. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Vimeo, make sure you go back to the area. On the area, there's a Journey to VR blog section. In that blog, I'm recording lots of other demos in Maya and Max, some stuff in Unreal, as well as some interviews that I've done with customers. Furthermore, we have some really awesome written articles that have been put together that, again, are sharing best practices from our customers, lots of fun stories, so make sure you go check all that stuff out. It's super, super cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch Journey to VR. I hope you guys are digging it. Cheers, everybody.